on the aisle in tandem, seldom repeated since fists of confetti. Bare shelves instead of pastel dress suits, face masks instead of nervous smiles. He guards her palms from the hand from the germs on the trolley, from the threat that slaying millions. A silent, protective love, if not quite Cupid's marriage. She logs on in the dining room. He makes his own PPE. They soldier on, as they always do, minimal fuss. Down the aisle in tandem, no need for verbal shove. Guards her palms from the germs on the trolley, a silent, protective love. Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Abbott, and welcome to Insta Session number 43. Tomorrow, it'll be a year to the day since the first Insta Session, um, which is bonkers, isn't it? Um, and tonight, our guest is Patrizia Longhitano, which I'm very excited about. Uh, Patrizia uh, was born in Brazil. Uh, she spent most of her life in Italy with her adoptive parents before moving to the UK in 2005, where she works in London as a nanny. Um, some of her poems have featured in Painted Spoken, Harana Poetry Music, uh, Magazine, the Un Nuevo Sol Anthology, which is where I discovered her work, the Rialto Magazine and the South Bank Poetry Magazine. Um, yeah, Patrizia is a wonderful uh, poet who writes in various uh, languages and I'm very excited that she's been able to join us tonight. And let me just have a butcher's see if I can find her. Da, 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 da. Where were we? Oh, she's not on yet. Okay, that's cool. I shall, <laughs> I shall read a short poem and then uh, keep an eye out. Okay. This one's about karaoke. I'm looking forward to getting that to that. In flat-roofed pubs on the corners of estates, he clutches his carrier with pride. They have the lyrics on the screen, but this man is analogue, typed up, stacked neatly, and then dispatched into plastic. He winces as he watches young romantics, cavorting and dancing at angles, nursing half a feakstons until the karaoke resumes, his sun star spotlight. His voice is gravelly nowadays with a croak as he pushes his range, but twenty years previous this guy was a different class. Eyes scrunched, he serenades the lovers that escaped, as the young romantics fumble through the food of distant dreams, dumb to what they're missing and how precious these moments are. His three minutes flash and he picks up his bag and he shuffles to his stool at the bar. Glen Campbell, Johnny Walker, Tom Jones and then bed. Old lungs, young lovers, every Friday from eight. I'm just going to give uh, Patrizia a little DM. Uh, oh, here we are. All good, all good, all good. Uh, oh, that's weird. For some reason, Patrizia, it won't let me invite you. So can you try and join? It should be an option for you to... Um, ask to be in the video for some reason the little smiley face isn't popping up next to your face it's not letting me invite you um, if you could do that Patrizia that would be lovely because I don't know why but it's not giving me the option of inviting you which is strange um, so yeah I'll, I'll let Patrizia have a go at that um, so yeah like I say tomorrow it's a year to the day since we started these insta sessions um, and as I've said several times on here I thought maybe I was going to do like 10, 12, um, just something to, to keep us going through lockdown 1 which we obviously didn't realise would be called lockdown 1, we just thought it would be called lockdown um, and I just want to say a huge thanks to all of the poets who've, who've featured so far because they gave up the time like I'm not able to pay people to do these sessions and I've had some wonderful poets from around the world um, sharing their work and it, it's really made my lockdown it's really got me through so a huge thank you to everyone who's who's been a part of it so far um see if i can yeah that's that's really strange how i can't invite patrizia um yeah if if you if you joined patrizia you should have had um an option that said that 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 um that said like ask to be in call or something like that oh here we go good then. so uh, without further ado, please welcome Patrizia Longhitano. Here we go. Da -da. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? All right, all right. I just don't know what it was that. Uh, why? No idea. Uh, yeah, whatever. 
you're here now. It's fine. Um, great. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I've been looking forward to this one. Um, how are you doing? All right. Uh, I was just rushing from work uh, and uh, <clears throat> I just needed one minute to settle and be ready. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's completely fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the joys of Instagram, but like you need to just take a minute, don't you, before you get on. I'll get yeah. that. Um, so how do you find, uh, how, how do you find as a writer, like, do you have to specifically carve out writing time or is it a matter of just getting you writing in, in little pockets wherever you can or like, how, do, how do you sort of balance it? Um, <clears throat> I think uh, I need, uh, um, I always need to be on a course uh, or something like that. Right. Otherwise, uh, um, I just need the input. Uh um yeah for me that's the the easier way to, uh, to challenge myself and um i like the fact that uh, you know like for example when you are on the course uh, then every week you need to come out with something and so then you have the deadline uh, um and that really helps me um i always like to read the newspaper um or you know before the COVID, uh, go to exhibitions something like that uh, um those are things that always inspire me but um, yeah uh usually i need um uh, um how do you say i need more the stick than the carrot <laughs> you need a little nudge you need a deadline yeah, yeah i get yeah. you i get you um have you found that um coming to the uk in 2005 uh, has completely transformed your writing in terms of those influences that are around you? Um, well, yes. Yes. Because before uh, in Italy, uh, I guess my my only knowledge uh, was, uh, you know, about um, English literature was uh, the classics like, uh, I don't know, T.S. Eliot, uh, um i uh, dylan thomas uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so uh and and the fact that the, in italy was uh, a little bit um uh i i always wanted to find uh, women poets um but it was really hard uh, and when i would find something in the bookshop uh, it would always be um uh, collections about uh, motherhood, uh, uh, you know, something like that. Uh, and I was yeah. like, uh, no, that's not for me. Um, so it was definitely refreshing when I came here and saw that actually, um, you know, women have many voices and, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that the best poets in the country right now are women and women are sort of at the forefront of the scene and of the movement. And so that's not the case in Italy. It would is that not? Uh, I have to be honest. Uh, um, I'm not. Uh, you know, when I left Italy, that wasn't the situation. Uh, right. Instead, now I know um, there is definitely a shift. Um, I was trying to think because uh, uh, no, I'm not going to say anything because I can't remember <laughs> the surname of this poet. Uh, so uh, um. yeah. So, yeah, cool. but well, we'll... I, I just know that uh, it's translated by um, uh, Caroline Maldonado, um, and um, so if someone is any curious, they can uh, go through that uh, and find the mm. poeta that I'm talking about. She's Italian and she talks about uh, <clears throat> immigration, especially because you know we do have a problem. Uh, um, not a problem, but it's an issue in Italy. Um, because geographically speaking, you know, they all come from there. Um, yeah. So, so there is a problem about uh, um, immigration and refugees, uh, and um, she talks yeah. very well about uh, those issues. Whereabouts in Italy did you grow up? Uh, north. 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 Cool. North. Yeah, like one hour from Venice. Cool. Well, would you fancy sharing a poem? Yeah, I love that. Uh, um, I was thinking to start uh, with a poem uh, about London because I think that uh, right now we are really feeling the urge to go out uh, 
And uh, yeah. I, I think I, I'm honestly counting the days until the museums and the galleries reopen. Yeah, and yeah. So yeah, I think uh, that's uh, this is might be the the right poem. Uh, Ode for the City of London. Bring me high rents, uh, tiny flats, moldy walls, basements with only two windows. Bring me the mirage of cemented patio and here, here, a living room. And I will show you the meaning of gratitude and devotion. Let's have scones with strawberry jam and rhodas clotted cream and the DNA while the Italian pianist plays the piaf tunes. Let's wet our feet while crossing the shallow pool our mind still on the jewelry behind the glass. Bring me to Highgate Cemetery and let's try to find a Karl Marx tomb. Bring me marching bands playing the pavilion in St. James Park on a dude Sunday morning. Bring me vegan brunches at the palm vaults while I tell to myself, I'm not a hipster. Let me buy you a French DVD from FOP. Let's walk to the British Museum and cross those streets where once the Stephen sisters walked to. Let's go for a black and white movie at the BFI and having gin and tonic at the bar. Mm. Bring me to the pier when it's dark and windy. Let's be silent. Let's listen to the voices of the women who build the bridges, the streets and the buildings of our city. Bring me in front of the globe when all the lights are off. Let's be silent. Let's listen to the voices of Bodica and her daughters while they were killing your ancestors or mine and burning everything to ashes. Let me close my eyes. Let me breathe deeply. Let me turn towards Sadok, towards home, where if I can only find some change for the milk, I can make you an Italian hot chocolate before bed. Wow. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank Love you. that. When did you write that? Uh, uh, at, at least a couple of years ago, yeah. Um, always, of course, during a course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh wow! No, I love that. And so that um, I was curious about your notion of home, and it sort of mentioned it towards the end there. So, would you consider Italy to be your home because that's where you were raised with your adoptive parents, or do you revisit Brazil or? Um. No, uh, right now I I have no problem to say that uh, um, I do feel to be a Londoner. Um, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is something about London that really makes me feel home, and it made yeah. me feel that uh, since day one. Um, and, um, and yeah, it was strange because when I decided to move here, um, I actually never been in the UK. But I knew that 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 was the right place for me. Um, yeah. So yeah. It's such a welcoming city, isn't it? It's such an international city. It's such a like you do feel like a Londoner, don't you? Like I felt like a Londoner when I lived there briefly, and like yeah, it's it's wonderful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it's 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 nice to not have a um, you know because in Italy um, I had a um let's say the strangest uh, um background you know uh yeah. he said here uh you know there are so many weird stories and um <laughs> you know so it's uh it's it's um you know i'm truly a nobody so yeah. it's nice yeah absolutely yeah i get that yeah 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 great um, so I came across your work in the um, Unnuevo Sol anthology, which was published by Flip Tide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's such a wonderful anthology. And um, yeah, so I, I was researching for a project I'm working on and I came across your work. So I'm really, really happy to have you on tonight. And uh, I've been reading some of your interviews, like, um, but I, I, I can't remember. Did you start writing poetry in English before you moved? To, you, you must have done. You must have started writing poetry in English before you moved to the UK. Um, not really. What uh, um, I was obsessed with uh, were lyrics of uh, um, English <laughs> English songs, and nice. so uh, since a young age, uh, I I would really enjoy just translate them, uh, and you know, oh, okay. uh, yeah. Um, although you know, 
um, the music that I used to like wasn't that cool because I, I really, really liked to take that. <laughs> I was going to ask which, which lyricist was it that you're into and it's Gary Barlow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had play. a huge crush on Mark Owen. Um, so that's you know I'm secretly a Robbie Williams super fan, so like it's fine. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool, great. Well, do you fancy sharing us another poem? Yes. Um, so this one. Uh, so it's more about uh, my childhood. Uh, um, it's, uh, you know, in that period where you start, uh, um, you know, you're still a child, uh, but, you know, you are becoming, uh, you're growing up. So you start feeling things uh, uh, and you don't really know what these things are. Uh, and so, um, you know, yeah, I just try to capture, um, you know, those emotions. Uh, Magnolia tree. My mother sold me a yellow dress. I found it this morning, laying in my chair when I woke up. She brushes my hair and keeps on brushing it, even when there are no more knots. She tells me how lucky I am to have so much hair and that I'm allowed to choose a candy from the jar in the hole. I quickly tie the laces of my sneakers and already smelling it, I choose the freezy cherry red papery package. I can feel through my fingers the grain being squashed and moved back and forth. The doorbell rings and I run out screaming my best friend's name while holding up high and shaking the candy. He smiles and tries to reach for it, but I move too fast, giving him my back while I open the package. He lingers, he lingers on me, but I push him away. My annoyed mother's face calls me down and proposes us to go to sit in the grass and share it. We sit under the magnolia tree, and silently I pass him the candy. He wets the swizzle stick in his mouth, then in the red powder while I straighten up my skirt and put a lock of hair behind my ear. He opens his mouth while we both try to be quiet and hear the fizz crackling. After we finish the candy, we lie down on our sides, silently listening to our breathing, the grass moving, and the chemical fruity flavor dissolving in our mouth. Above us, the wind shakes the leaves and the white pinkish flowers. My mother asks us if we want something to drink, but we both shout that we are fine. While trying to measure his wrist for a daisy chain, he starts humming, who killed cock robin? On the last daisy, I get up, and while tying the chain on him, we both sing, who told the bell? Hmm, I'll tell the bell. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Oh, just such beautiful poetry to listen to. I'm so lucky to do these sessions. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, actually, um, if I may say, I really, really enjoyed the last week. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, because you know, I, I you know, we are all humans, and uh, you know, we can't be perfect. So you know, um, there is always uh, at these kind of sessions uh, at least uh, one or two poems that you're like, mm, okay. Um, and instead, the last week, uh, I, I mean, every poem uh, for me was just uh, magic. Uh, yeah. At a certain point, I had to stop comment because I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, cat's brilliant. To be fair, yeah. Um, so, in terms of your body of work, um, do you see it moving towards like putting together a pamphlet or a collection, or would you take it in another direction? Yeah. Um, I would definitely like uh, to put together something uh, because um, the truth is that I've been writing, writing for quite a while in English. And uh, although I did have a couple of breaks, uh, but um, overall, I, I know I have uh, plenty of stuff. Uh, um, hmm. But then uh, it's even true that uh, um, last year after doing um, a commission from the PTC, I... I suddenly discover uh, this passion for videos and uh, uh, yeah, uh, so um, I would definitely like to explore more that. Uh, 
Um, so like poem films and yeah well i mean you know the traditional routes of pamphlets or collections that's just one option isn't it like you say there's video audio there's so many directions so i was just yeah. curious to see where you're at that sounds good yeah yeah i would definitely like to you know um to be able to do more than one uh, uh yeah thing in poetry um Ooh. yeah that's I what's so good about poetry the, yeah i think sometimes it's just uh um to have the courage to give uh, to ourselves the permission to do something you know absolutely um yeah yeah having the confidence to to, mm -hmm. to to take that step or whatever you know i totally get what you mean i totally get what you mean but um that sounds great yeah um so it's just gone 10 to obviously if you're happy to i'm happy to run over slightly after eight o'clock because i know we started a little bit late it's entirely up to you yeah um but if you fancy sharing a poem be lovely yeah yeah um oh. okay so um i'm not going to do it all because i think uh uh it would take too long but i was thinking to do this oh, so, nice. yeah it's part of the um um it's part of the thing, one of the things that I did for the PTC. Um, so I did this video where I was using the stop motion uh, and uh, played with the fortune teller. Uh, uh -huh. And so for each uh, uh, color, there is uh, a small poem uh, um, related mm -hmm. to the color. So maybe um, you can tell me a number. Um, two. Uh, one, two. And so these are the colors, pink, red, purple, and green. Red. Red, okay. Red. There is a thread connecting Grecian murals, Renaissance paintings, and every single woman who ever existed. The first time I got my period, I was on holiday, and my mother asked me if she could tell my father. No, I said, and she nodded. When I got out of the bathroom, my dad said, uh, get, out in, get in the car, we're going to buy you sanitary towels. <laughs> uh, would you like to do, maybe we can do two colors? Sure, yeah. Yeah, um, um, yeah tell me another number. Uh, eight? eight. Does it go as high as eight? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so uh, yellow, orange, blue, and brown. Yellow. 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 It was supposed to be yellow. Fuck yellow. Give me gold. Give me Clint <laughs> on a robe. And let's make bread with uh, Van Gogh sweet. Give me eternal opulence while riding the chariot in Apollo's arms. Nice. What the hell? Brilliant. <laughs> Do you want to pick one of those at random yourself? I feel like I, I don't want you to feel like you've missed out one that you really love. I'm trying to think. Uh, which one do I really love? Hmm. Um, I love that line, though. Fuck yellow, give me gold. That's brilliant. <laughs> and your name's Gold Wild Poppy as well, obviously, so there's a nice link. Uh, um, okay, blue. Blue adds right is the oldest blue pigment ever used. Ancient Egypt says, you're welcome. When I was three years old, I learned swimming by not drowning. The sea in winter or in a storm are my favorite sceneries. I love swimming. I learned swimming by not drowning. Wow, what a line. What a line. Amazing. Yeah, true story. Brilliant. The teacher pushed me <laughs> in the swimming pool. <laughs> so it was have a swim or drown. That's your choice. So that's yeah. how you learn. Yeah. Well, that's how life yeah. is, you know? <laughs> And my mother on the side yeah. ideas, um, move your hands, move your hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's okay. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, yeah. I love stuff like that. So even that that you've just demonstrated, like just the things you can do with poetry and the fun you can have with it and the places you can mm. go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was brilliant. Yeah, I would definitely like to explore more that. Though. Yeah. Did you do much um, performing in London, like at any London spoken word nights or anything? You know what? Uh, um, 
I was talking to a friend the other day about this so because uh, I actually um, never went to a spoken word night uh, um, as a performer, uh, just because uh, I never thought of myself uh, as that kind of performer. Um, and, um, and it's strange because uh, this is the way I see myself. Uh, um, but then um, I had this friend and, and other people telling me instead, uh, no, you just have to try to do that. Uh, um, so now that, you know, uh, things are start to reopen, um, I might give it a try, you know, why not? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so many great nights in London, you know, like Boomerang and, and old Joe Dance and all that. Yeah, yeah, give it a shot. Yeah, yeah. There's a pub called the Betsy Trotwood in Farringdon, which is like the poetry heart of London. Lots of like really cool left wing poets and like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's okay, even because uh, um, I don't think it's the end of the world to fail sometimes, uh, you know. Totally. Um, you know, I think there is always. Uh, an opportunity to you know learn something and improve ourselves so, we'll i also find that um audiences at spoken word nights and poetry nights are very forgiving and mm -hmm. like they want to see you do well you know they're very nurturing and in london as well i feel like audiences are very very patient and that want to see you so yeah yeah, yeah. Nice. we'll see oh well if not i'll pay for you to come up to leeds yeah <laughs> instead yeah yeah, that would be nice. Even because I think I've never been to Leeds, so uh, and I definitely want to travel more uh, yeah. in the UK. I I think I'm one of those people who thinks uh, there's nothing outside London, uh, in the sense <laughs> like uh, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's London's like fun. a London. London's like its own little country. Like the rest of the yes. UK is totally different. Yes. You know. Yes, yeah. Definitely. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's nearly eight o'clock, but I would love if you want to share another one or two poems. It's entirely up to you, but... Um... Um, yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, there is a... Um, yes, there is a poem that... Uh, um, I'm not sure I ever read it, uh, um, you know, in an online event or, you know, whatever. Um, oh. It's in actually in Nuevo Sol. Oh, um yes. so yeah it's a little bit sad but hopefully it's still okay time they say it's relative the year the year was born two young men died in sicily and their killers were never found i was two months old when they gave each other the last kiss the last embrace while I was surrounded by the, by the Amazonian forest, laughing and giggling to my mother, maybe in that moment they were being pushed in the car that brought them to the citrus grove. When I was crying the night, my parents went to check me in my cot. The two men were making love, imagining a future together. From Jara to Manaus, there are a little bit more than 9,000 kilometers between me and those two bodies, between us, a world that we were supposed to discover and eat. Giorgio and Tony, Giorgio, Tony and Patrizia, Giorgio, Tony, Patrizia and the oceans, the deserts, the hurricanes, the sharks, the metropolis, the meadows and eagles and orchids in swamps and centuries old trees. My parents were imagining what I might accomplish, who I might meet or love one day. They were looking at the stars, embracing each other, while the two boys got a bullet in their heads. We were all breathing together. We were all beings. We were all being together, and then not. Thank you. Oh, I love that poem so much. I'm glad you shared that. That's wonderful. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, you know, I thank you for inviting me, and uh, I, you know, I really think these Tuesday nights are uh, a really uh, beautiful event. So, thank, thank you, you. In the effort to creating this. Oh, no, no worries. Like I said, I, I never realized it had gone for a year, but yeah. here we are. But, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I really enjoy it. So, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon that you've been a part of it. So, Thank you, Patricia. And if I don't see you in London, I'll see you in Leeds. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>
Cool. Take care. Okay. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Um, Patrizia Longitano there. Um, please follow her at Gold Wild Poppy on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, keep an eye out. She has some wonderful poems in various anthologies, including Underwave or Soul. Um, and as you've just seen, she's just a brilliant person and a brilliant poet. Uh, next week, we are back with Otis Mensa. Uh, Otis is based in Sheffield and is a real uh, up and coming poet in Sheffield. He's, 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 um, he's absolutely fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, my name is Matt Abbott. We are Names and Fugs. Take care and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Yeah.